What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in this video, we're going to talk about some of the most important things you can know for working with cabinets inside of SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. And just real quick, if you are interested in learning more about um, creating not only your cabinet models, but also great plans from those models as well. Um, the Cabinet Essentials course is included as a part of the SketchUp Essentials course. Um, and you can get lifetime access through the SketchUp to the SketchUp Essentials course through the end of this week um, on Black Friday. So uh, definitely check that out. Uh, you can check it out by going to the sketchupessentials.com slash course. And that'll include the complete, not only the Cabinet Essentials course, but also my dynamic component libraries, which save a ton of time and modeling things like kitchens and baths and SketchUp. So if you want to check that out, uh, you can do that at that link. And uh, yeah, let's get back to the video. Okay. So the first thing I wanted to hit was just how you can create cabinets that are resizable. And so what I've got here is I've got three options for you to take a look at. And so the first is, and the easiest way to create something that can resize is going to be to use a dynamic component. And you can get a full collection of dynamic components. So I have like dynamic bases as well as actual cabinets with doors too um, that resize. So the easiest thing is to have a dynamic component that's going to resize and it's going to maintain the thickness of things like walls. Um, if you're doing something like a base cabinet, cabinet like this. Now, if you don't have that or you're trying to use this for some sort of woodworking or something like that, you might need to approach it a different way. And so another way to do this without creating a dynamic component is if you create a group of geometry and you don't group everything inside of that object, then what you can do, notice how I have these all in here as just like faces like this. So you can utilize the sticky geometry in the model. So what that means is that means that I could come in here and drag a selection box across this base cabinet, and then I can move this and resize it to whatever I want the size to be, right? So this is a fast, easy way to resize thing. The trick is you need to make sure that you're always doing this along the red ab axis of the object so that you're not distorting your cabinet, right? Because if you distort your cabinet, then uh, you're not in very good shape. So you want to avoid doing that. But if you just want some quick to adjust bases, you don't want to mess around with dynamic cabinets, you're doing interior design or something like this, this is a great way to do it because you just have to draw this once and then every time you need a different size cabinet, right, you just resize it to whatever you want. So say this one needed to be a lot smaller, what I could do is just pick up the geometry over here and I could just resize this to whatever I want it to be. So um, if you can use sticky geometry in your models, that can be a massive time saver. And then method three is say that you are a woodworker and you've kind of got this set up where you're going to have the different parts and pieces labeled in here. A lot of the time, if I was to do a cut list or something like that, I would probably put the final dimensions in here um, just to export them to a report or something like that. But if you do that, right, that means you have to group every one of the parts and pieces. Well, when you group every one of the parts and pieces like this, then that thing that we were doing with the sticky geometry doesn't work. And this is not a dynamic component, so I can't scale it because if I scale it, it's going to distort everything, right? Then like my end panels get distorted down. They're not the proper width that kind of thing. So what I do for something like this, if I do need to group everything in my model and I can't use a dynamic component, I use an extension called Curic Stretch. So what Curic Stretch does is it allows you to um, select objects inside of a group. So if I select this cabinet, for example, I click in here and then I click and drag. Notice what it's going to do is it's going to pick up all the vertices that are in here. Well, now if I move this, it's doing the same thing as we were doing over here with the raw geometry, but this geometry maintains its groups, right? So you can use Curic Stretch in order to stretch nested groups like this in order to resize things. So again, it's a huge time saver. The only problem with this is you would want to make sure that you didn't come in here and add dimensions to your groups if you were trying to create a cut list until after you've got everything to the size that you want. But if you do need a cabinet that's going to keep everything grouped like this, um, that's a good option. So that's three ways to work with just kind of your base geometry. Okay, so next up is something I really want to hammer on. Um, and a lot of people know about it, but a lot of people don't. This will save you massive amounts of time when you're working with things that have repeating objects like this. So for example, when you work with a cabinet like this one, you're going to reuse pieces of the model a lot. This side panel is going to be exactly the same size as the side panel over here. And it's going to be the same thing with like the rear panel on the bottom or the bottom panel on the bottom. You're reusing all of this stuff 
over and over again. So in this case, what I can do is I can take these objects and I can use the move tool in copy mode in order to copy these across. So you don't want to do a copy paste. You want to select the objects you want to copy, tap the M key, click on the corner. And then if you tap the control key, you'll go into copy mode right here. Well, going into copy mode it allows me to really quickly make a copy of a shape. So if I wanted to create a copy of this rear panel, note that the point that you use is going to be important because on the back, I don't want to use this as my base point because if I use this as my base point, it's going to be outside of my model. I want to use this as my base point because I want to copy this and align it with the back right here like this. So the other cool thing is not only does the move tool work in copy mode, so does the rotate tool. So if I create a copy here with the move tool and then I need to create a stretcher down below and I'm going to go ahead and move this up just a tad so it's going to align right here so I have room for my rear panel, but I could just use the rotate tool so you can tap Q, you can tap the right arrow key and single click and then single click again to rotate this. But what I want to do is I want to tap control. What that's going to do is that's going to put me in copy mode right here. So the rotate tool is going to create a copy at 90 degrees right here. Well, then I can just take this object and just align it with the bottom right here. Then I could come in here and I could draw the back of my cabinet really easy like this. We'll just extrude this out three quarters of an inch or negative three quarters of an inch right here. I'll just triple click on it and we'll make it a group. So use that move tool in copy mode because it's going to save you a massive amount of time as well as the rotate tool. Now, in addition, we also have the ability to use another tool in copy mode, which I'm going to talk about in a second. But the first thing I want to talk about is when you have cabinets like this, you want to be able to create reveals, right? So the reveal is going to be just the like little bit of inset that you have between cabinet doors, for example. So say that we've got a cabinet right here, and let's say I want this whole thing to have a certain width. And in fact, I'm actually going to use my dynamic component because my dynamic component is easily the fastest way to do this. Again, you can get access to that dynamic component and others inside of my course, but you could just do this manually too. But say I wanted this to be, we'll call it 24 inches wide. So what I can do is I can just scale it to 24 inches wide. And because it's dynamic, it'll automatically resize these panels in order to keep the uh, distance in there. But a lot of the time, what we're going to do is we need to create a door with a reveal. And so that means it's going to have a little bit of gap between the outside here and also between the doors. And so the way that I'll do this is I'll click in here and I'll draw a face that gets all the way to the corner here and all the way to the midpoint here. And then whatever my reveal is, I'm just going to offset it in. So say that's going to be an eighth of an inch like this. So I'm going to do a one eighth inch offset. Well, now this is offset in. So if I was to push pull this out, right, notice how I've got just this little bit of gap on the outside. Well, before I push pull this out, I want to get rid of this extra geometry because I don't like leaving extra geometry in my model. Well, there's a trick for that, which is we're going to pick up this face and the selected edges, and then we're going to select this face and then deselect this face and the selected edges. So what I'm trying to avoid is if you look at this face right here, I'm trying to avoid having to come in here and like manually erase these things um, because it can just be kind of time consuming. What I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to double click right here and then I'll hold the shift key and I'll double click here and then I'll double click again. So what that does is that'll pick up this face and its connected edges. If I hold shift and click, it's going to pick up this face and the connected edges. And then if I double click again with the shift key held down, it will deselect this face and the connected edges. Well, now I can just tap the delete key right here and delete out that extra. Now, the other thing with your doors is remember that in the middle, your gap's going to be a little bit weird because you're going to have a second door over here. And so you want this one to be offset by a 16th of an inch. And then it's going to be a 16th over here in order to maintain the same gap around the outside. So right now, for example, let's say that we were to create a door here. So I'm just going to create a group. I'll push pull this out three quarters of an inch right here. And we'll talk about this tip in a second. Don't worry about this for right now. But notice what's going to happen is... I'm going to have an eighth of an inch gap on the outside, but I'm going to have a quarter inch gap on the inside, right? Because the way we offset this in was kind of uniform. So what we're going to do is before we extrude this, we're just going to use the move tool and we're just going to slide this edge over a 16th of an inch. 
right here. Now, when I create this door, so I'm just going to push pull this out, maybe three quarters of an inch right here. Now, when I create this door, it has the proper spacing on this other side, and you're going to have a uniform gap all the way around the outside, right? So if I was to draw a line to check this, this one, whoops, is going to have an eighth of an inch gap here, and this will have an eighth of an inch gap here like this. Now, real quick, one thing I want to talk about before we go any further, and I'm going to go ahead and offset this in maybe like by an inch and a half, and we'll push pull this back just so it looks a little bit better. Um, but let's say that we had a line of cabinets in here like this one. One of the things that I find extremely helpful is having the ability to copy things using the flip tool. Because what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to maintain that gap from the outside here like this. Well, the thing is that can be a little bit hard to find over here. And also the gap on this side is different than this side. So what I really need to do is I really need to flip this over the middle in order to maintain that uniform gap. Well, in this case, the way that you can do that is you can use the flip tool in copy mode. So the flip tool is a tool that you can use in order to flip things along an axis, right? Um, and it's not really going to show up very well here unless I do this. But one of the things you can do about this is you can click and drag the planes that are in here in order to set what this is going to flip across. So this is going to give me the ability to flip across the middle right here. Well, not only can I set that plane, I can also tap the control key in order to go into copy mode. And so basically what I can do is I can use the flip tool in copy mode in order to create copies. And so assuming my spacing is set up properly over here, which it's not, it's going to be off by a little bit um, just because I didn't really set these up with the proper spacing on the side here. So what I would do for this one is I would just double click in here and I'd use the sticky geometry and just slide this over by an extra 16th so that I have the proper spacing. But now I would take both of these and I would use the flip tool in copy mode, click and drag and tap control in order to copy those over here as well. So that flip tool in copy mode can actually be a massive, massive time saver um, when it comes to putting objects in the proper place because cabinets are just repeating things over and over again. Okay, so another thing that I highly highly recommend is creating your own library of cabinets because odds are you're going to use the same things over and over again, right? Like you're going to reuse cabinets. So for me, for example, I have a collection of not only dynamic cabinets, which can resize. So um, these are all dynamic over here and they're in different styles, right? I've got like a shaker style. I've got um, some styles that have face frames on them and these are all dynamic and I use them over and over again, but I also have the parts and pieces. Whatever you use, and by the way, you, you can't get a copy of this with a member to my course, which uh, I'll link to in the notes down below. If you do want something, it's kind of more like done for you. But whatever your library is, you should save it as a file like this one so that you can get things like this back into your models really quickly. So for me, for example, if I want to bring this cabinet in, I can just copy it in this SketchUp window because I have two SketchUp windows open and I can just paste it inside of this model right here. So if I do want to quickly add cabinets, I can just bring them in from my cabinet library instead of remodeling them over and over again. The goal is always to keep from remodeling things. So in this case, I could just scale this object right here because these are dynamic. And then again, I would use the flip tool in copy mode in order to flip this over here. And now I have two cabinets on the wall. And so for my doors, again, I would use the sticky geometry. So I'm just going to move this up right here. And notice how I'm using the corner point as an inference point right here. Well, in this case, this already has the right width, right? So I'm just going to double click in here and I'm just going to adjust it and move it up to the end. And I'm using that sticky geometry again, right? So I'm just picking up this geometry right here. I'm going to move this up like this. And then I'm going to move it down. Now, could you create your own dynamic component that'll do that? Yes, and I have. But a lot of the time when you're dealing with separate styles, you don't really need to mess around with creating that dynamic component. And then we would just do the same thing, right? Flip tool in copy mode. Whoops. You want to make sure we pick up the red right here, but we'll pick this up and then do the same thing 
over here. And in this case, I didn't go through and fix the gap, um, but you already know how to do that. But you can see how adding these in here is really easy. Well, one of the things that I run into, and so I also recommend not only that you create a component library, but you also create a material library. So if you have materials that you use over and over again, what I'll do is I'll create a little swatch like this one. So it's just a piece of geometry that has the material that I reuse applied to it. Well, the cool thing about that is I can take that swatch and I can copy it from my separate SketchUp model and I can paste it in here. Well, then I can, and I'm just going to throw all of this in a group to save time. What I can do is I can sample that with my material sampler right here and apply that material to this entire group. Okay, so one of the other things that I run into a lot is first off, when I have groups of cabinets, I prefer whenever possible to just apply materials to the outside of my groups, just because it makes it really easy for me to affect uh, changes to those materials. So say I wanted to start with this uh, oak material, but then I wanted to look at an option for this walnut material. If I apply materials to the outside of the objects like this, then what happens is everything gets that material applied to it. And I don't have to go through and do each one of these individually. Now, there's a couple issues with this sometimes. So sometimes one of the things that you run into is your materials run the wrong direction, right? And so the reason for this is because the object axes, when you apply something to the exterior of an object, are governing what direction the materials are going to go. So for a non-dynamic object that isn't using the axes, what you can do in order to adjust the direction of the materials is you can adjust the direction of the axes. So if I come in here and change the axis direction on this object, so um, you can put it on the same point if you want to, but I'm just going to change it so that the red axis is facing up. Notice how if I click outside of this, then the material is actually going to be facing that different direction, right? So if I do the same thing over here, red axis facing up and click out of it, it changes the direction of all materials applied to those objects. And in this case, it would actually be faster for me to come in here and just create a copy based on the midpoint of this object right here, and we'll be good to go. And so you don't want to do that with dynamic components because dynamic components use wherever the axis is in order to set the way that those components are going to work. So if you do have individual faces like this one, you don't want to change the object axis in here because it's going to break the component. See how I did it here and it breaks the way the component works. So you don't want to use the axis tip for that. What you're going to do with that is you can just come in here for individual faces and remember that even though you have materials applied to the outside of this overall group, Group, if you have materials applied to a face, then they're going to govern. So in this case, if I apply this directly to this face, notice how I can right click on it and I can use the position texture function in order to set the direction of the material like this. Well, then if I click back out of here, whatever is on the face is going to govern. So for those few faces where you can't adjust the axes um, to adjust the direction, what you can do is just apply a material directly to the face like this in order to over override the texture positioning or um, direction. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought about this video. If you learned something new, I just love having that conversation with you guys. So if you do want to go more in depth with your cabinet modeling and learn some other things about SketchUp and get some support as well, make sure you check out the course, which is on a lifetime access promotion through the end of the week. Um, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.